Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and Judge Advocate General Corps officers. I am Sir Goodness. One of the interesting aspects of Ace Combat 7 is the chunk of the game where you fly in a penal squadron. But you don't start the game in this penal squadron. Rather, you start flying in a regular squadron, and then a simple matter of being in the wrong place at the wrong time results in a court-martial and transfer to that penal squadron. So, is it reasonable to assume that the court-martial would find the protagonist, Trigger, guilty of murdering the former president? Let's find out with a legal analysis. In Ace Combat 7, the first arc of the campaign concludes with the ill-fated attempt to rescue the beloved former president of Osea, Vincent Harling. Harling was visiting the space elevator when the war depicted in the game begins. The operation itself is arguably a poorly thought out mess. I mean, you send in a singular rescue team aboard a helicopter, rescue a VIP from a single most strategically important location in the war, expect to make a rescue, and fly away by means of a slow helicopter when the arsenal board with its drone babies has plenty of time to show up? Of course, the mission turns out wonderfully well when the arsenal bird does show up and its MQ-101 drones overwhelm the escort for Mother Goose 1. Then, it happens. And immediately, Trigger is accused of firing the missile that killed Harling, and the foundations of a court-martial are established within minutes. So, let's talk about that court-martial. Could Trigger win the case, or will the powers that be sweep Trigger under the rug as a convenient scapegoat? Time to take a gander. Although Osea is a fictional country, it is the Ace Combat equivalent of the United States. For this video's sake, I will be applying U.S. law. U.S. military law is primarily covered under the Uniform Code of Military Justice, which is found in Title 10, Chapter 47 of the U.S. Code, which is where you can see the federal statutes. Military courts are mostly bound by the same rules, laws, and procedures as civilian courts. Defendants are entitled to free representation by a military lawyer. You probably have heard the term JAG to refer to military lawyers. This is an acronym for Judge Advocate General. The lawyers practicing with a military branch's JAG Corps are called Judge Advocates. A defendant can hire a civilian lawyer, but the military won't cover the cost. Defendants in military courts have the right to trial by judge or jury, just like defendants in civilian courts do. While civilian courts have juries that consist of an assortment of local citizens yoinked off the street, court-martials will have juries that consist of military members, typically officers. This is a big difference as these two groups, average citizens and military members, have different backgrounds and can have very different reactions to arguments presented at a trial. There are three different types of court-martials. First, there are summary courts-martial, which are not really court-martials, as they are a less formal and non-judicial avenue for disciplining minor infractions that won't impact a defendant's record. Special courts-martial are for serious but minor infractions. The civilian equivalent of these are misdemeanors. Finally, there is the one that Trigger would be brought before, a general court-martial. General Courts Martial handle the civilian equivalent of felonies. Now that I laid out a bit about US military justice, let's proceed with Trigger's trial. Trigger could be charged for either murder or manslaughter, going by the language used, particularly assassination and murder. I suspect that Trigger was not charged with manslaughter, but if he was, the prosecution would argue culpable negligence, meaning that it was criminally negligent for Trigger to fire a missile during that situation. For murder, the prosecution would probably argue that Trigger was engaged in an act inherently dangerous to another, the another in this case being Harling, and that Trigger fired the missile with a wanton disregard for human life. Charging Trigger for premeditated murder is a possibility, but I don't know of any evidence to show that Trigger had a premeditated intent to kill Harling. His social media post history wouldn't be particularly helpful here either. So, the case against Trigger hinges on proving two things. First, is to prove that Trigger fired a missile, and that missile hit and destroyed Mother Goose 1. 
Second, is to prove that firing a missile at an enemy drone on Mother Goose One's tail was inherently dangerous, and that Trigger did it with a wanton disregard for human life. What kind of evidence would be important here? Let's list it. Trigger's gun camera footage. Gun camera footage from other OCN and IUN PKF pilots, if any of them show footage of the incident. Radio transcripts. Radio da radar data, if possible. Flight data, recorder data. It, at least for Trigger's plane. Additionally, getting witness testimony from the other characters would be relevant, namely Skykeeper, Clown, and Knocker. The evidence would be used by the prosecution to show that Trigger fired a missile and that the missile hit Mother Goose 1. The defense would use the applicable evidence to discredit the prosecution's case. In both military and civilian criminal trials, the burden is on the prosecution to prove the defendant guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. The defendant will normally attack the prosecution's case to sow reasonable doubt. Of course, a defendant can sit back and do absolutely nothing and still win if the jury is unconvinced that the defendant is guilty after hearing the prosecution's case. Anyway, witnesses will probably be important to showing whether firing a missile at an enemy drone hot on a friendly's tail is criminally negligent if the charge is manslaughter, or completely out of line as in that wanton disregard for human life. The witnesses will also testify about their recollection of the incident, and the parties will see if the testimony can be cooperated with the evidence. I believe that the outcome of this trial wouldn't depend on the facts so much as the ulterior motives of OSIA, the IUNPKF, and the court. Let's keep in mind that there are only three weeks between the incident on June 6, 2019, and Trigger's first sortie for Spare Squadron on July 1, 2019. Realistically speaking, this makes for just over two weeks to perform pretrial proceedings, including an investigation of the incident, pressing charges against Trigger, and having a probable cause hearing. And that's not even getting to the trial itself. To complete a murder trial in military or civilian court, from investigation to sentencing within three weeks of the incident is practically impossible, not without violating procedure and the defendant's rights left and right. The only realistic way for a legitimate set of proceedings to happen in this time frame is that Trigger decides, or is pressured for whatever reason, to plead guilty to the murder charge. Under normal circumstances, Trigger's chances of getting acquitted depend a great deal on what evidence is available and introduced. On top of that, the jury's perspective and predispositions could go either way and would probably serve as a primary arbiter of Trigger's fate. Of course, the dates that we know of make this proper trial virtually impossible. Given these factors, there are plenty of reasons to explain why Trigger's case is later reopened and that he is pardoned. Properly reviewing the evidence could show that Trigger is not guilty. This is not even taking into account the confession of General Labarth that the whole thing was basically an erosion setup. Further, any halfway reasonable review of the case would find that Trigger's rights were violated and that the case was not in line with procedure. I don't think there's any way to have held a proper investigation, let alone enough time to prepare for trial with only two to three weeks to work with. Of course, the most likely reason for the reopening of the case and pardon was due to Wiseman working to get Trigger into the LRSSG after seeing him whip Mihai, Dumitrio, Magretta, Cornelio, Leopold, Blanca, Carol, Eon, Ignatius, Raphael, Maria, Nikitas, A. Shalaji into a pathetic retreat. To wrap things up, Trigger either was not given a fair trial or he pled guilty. Under normal circumstances, I don't know if Trigger would be found guilty. There are too many variables between the potential jurors and the evidence that could be used. If exactly what we see in the game was available as evidence, Trigger would most likely be acquitted. We don't see Trigger's missile hit Mother Goose 1, so there should be insufficient evidence to prove Trigger guilty of killing Harling beyond a reasonable doubt. We just can't confirm that it was Trigger's missile and not one from a drone, another drone, or that other drone if it was actually piloted by a guy named George. Thank you for watching this video about Trigger's Court Martial. Please remember to like this video, comment, and subscribe if you would like to see videos directly or tangentially similar to this one. Alfida Zen! Belka did nothing wrong.